Are calcium supplements bad for your heart? Today, I'll be answering that question, along with the pros and cons of taking calcium supplements to help you make an informed decision for yourself about whether or not to take calcium supplements. I'm Sarah, and I'm a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrated Nutrition. I'm also a BoneFit certified fitness instructor and a 500-hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga. Here on this channel, we discuss all things related to bone health. So let's get started talking about calcium supplements, osteoporosis, and heart health. First, let's go over how our bodies use calcium. We think of calcium as important for the structure of our bones, and it is, but calcium is also used for many other purposes in our bodies. Our bodies use calcium in the transmission of nerve impulses to signal things between cells, to produce energy for our bodies, and to contract our muscles. Calcium is also important for hormonal secretion. That's a tall list of things. In our bodies, the concentration of calcium is tightly controlled to ensure that there's the right amount of calcium to do all of the jobs that it's needed for. When our bodies don't have enough calcium to do all of the necessary jobs, then they raid our bones and take what they need to help maintain that tight control that's necessary for our other bodily functions. Our bones provide structural support for our bodies, but they also function as storehouses that release supplies to the rest of the body when necessary. Conceptually, it makes sense to try and restock our bones and our storehouses with supplies in the form of calcium supplements. The thing is, calcium supplements are not the same as consuming calcium in the form of foods, and our bodies treat calcium differently depending on the form that it enters the body. In 2020, researchers found that when calcium is consumed from supplements, this calcium may contribute to the buildup of calcification of the arteries in postmenopausal women. Having too much calcium from supplements is bad for your heart because we don't want calcification of our arteries. But just to muddle the waters even more regarding calcium, researchers have also found that having enough calcium intake daily contributes positively to heart health. Taking calcium and also taking vitamin D appear to protect the body from hypertension, heart attack, and stroke. So what gives, right? Researchers like that may leave you wanting to throw your hands up in the air in frustration, but there's more. The same researchers found that this didn't happen when calcium was consumed through the diet. This suggests that it's better to consume our daily calcium through diet whenever possible. The average daily consumption for calcium in the Western diet is somewhere between 700 and 900 milligrams per day. For adults under the age of 70, the daily recommended amount of calcium is 1,000 milligrams per day. And for adults over the age of 70, the daily recommended amount is 1,200 milligrams per day. This suggests that the majority of adults in Western countries of the world aren't quite getting enough calcium, but they're still getting a significant amount of calcium. That probably means that they don't need to supplement a full 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams each day. And since the problem of calcium leading to calcification of the arteries is a problem that happens from getting too much calcium from supplements, then it might be helpful to take a smaller dose of calcium from a supplement each day. This would help to protect your body from getting too much calcium from supplements while also giving your body the necessary restock of calcium each day to put into your bone storehouse. So where do you fit in with the average calcium consumption? Are you within the average? Do you consume more or less than the average? And how would you go about figuring out exactly where you sit with your calcium consumption? The International Osteoporosis Foundation offers a free calcium calculator. I will link to it in the description below this video. You can use that calculator to help figure out where you are with your personal calcium intake. This will help you to have a good gauge as to how much calcium you actually need to supplement. It may be that you're getting enough calcium and you don't need to supplement. 
it's also possible that you will need to supplement. And this calculator will help you to figure out how much you're short, if you're short, and if you need to supplement. If you realize that you need to supplement calcium, then it might leave you wondering what type of supplement you should take and when you should take it. These aspects of supplementing are also important considerations. Most of the calcium in our bodies is in the form of hydroxyapatite, which can be found in a lattice structure that's combined with other minerals in both our bones and our teeth. So if you find a supplement in this form, it's generally the best absorbed. They're often not readily available. And so then the next best form of a calcium supplement is calcium citrate. The citrate helps to improve absorption in your body. Calcium carbonate is commonly available in stores and is generally inexpensive, but it's not as readily absorbed by our bodies, making it not an ideal choice for a supplement if you have other options. Calcium can interact with other medications such as antibiotics and also other supplements, which means that it's best taken by itself as a supplement if possible. Recent research also suggests that calcium may compete with magnesium for absorption, so if you can, it's preferable to separate calcium and magnesium. I suggest that it may be helpful to take a supplement that has been carefully chosen to be the right amount for your body at dinner time. This gives you the opportunity to take other supplements in the morning and then to separate calcium out from magnesium. If you're choosing to take a magnesium supplement, taking this supplement at bedtime may be a good time to take it because magnesium may also help you to improve your sleep. By taking a calcium supplement at dinner time, this also gives you time during the day to figure out whether or not you need to take a supplement because you can then take into consideration how much calcium you've already consumed throughout the day. While consuming too much calcium from supplements can be bad for your heart, it's beneficial to figure out how much calcium your body actually needs and then to find the best quality supplement that you can afford and have access to, and then take that in the appropriate amount for yourself. I hope that you found this information helpful, and if you have, please share it with someone that you know and love who will also benefit from this information. And if you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more educational videos about bone health. And if you'd like to explore the studies that I used to create this video, links to those studies can be found in the description below this video, along with a link to the free calcium calculator. I look forward to talking with you soon.